Shalom, shalom, shalom. Great morning, overcomers. Welcome to Tea Time with Anna. Um, it has been a morning, a little bit late this morning, because I broke my favorite teacup. My favorite teacup. Anybody that knows me knows I have this uh, pink teacup that says pray, pray, pray. And I moved it just a little bit. It fell off of my stand, and now it's broken. So that's why I'm late. Um, so now we are going to stick with something a little bit more durable. All right. Well, great morning, overcomers. Welcome to Tea Time with Anna. My name is Anna Johnson, and I am your overcomer coach. Great morning. Uh, where today we're going to still be talking about relationships. And um, the Father has really just downloaded some things in my spirit this morning. And so we're going we're gonna to jump on in with this question. Uh, and everyone needs to hear the answer to um, these couple of questions I have this morning. So let's just start out with prayer real quick. Father, Father, Father Yahweh, I thank you for what you teach us in your word about relationships. I thank you for our opportunity to have relationship with you in and through your son, Yeshua. And Father, this is your platform. It's all about you. It's all about your people. And it's all about bringing forth healing for your glory, Father. In the mighty name of Yeshua, I pray and thank thee and give thee the glory. Hallelujah and hallelujah. So today's question is, what to do when you are feeling rejected? When you are feeling rejected, what to do? All right, so um, who hasn't wrestled with rejection? Like who has not struggled with rejection? Rejection is a real life experience. It's a human experience. And anyone that says they've never experienced rejection, they're not being, either they're not being honest with themselves, they're not being honest with others. Um, you know, sometimes people try to hide that rejection. But everyone goes through a period of which they feel rejected or they experience rejection. It is a human, um, it is a human experience. All right. But there's a lie out in the world that says everyone should be accepted. But God doesn't say that. God told Cain, if you will do well, I will accept what you are offering. Mm -hmm. So we're going to encounter rejection. We're not going to be accepted by everyone. Matter of fact, the scripture says that if every, you know, we're warned that if people like us and speak well of us, we sh could be, we should be a little nervous uh, because if the world loves us, then we're not doing our job. Oh my goodness, father. I just heard that. <laughs> if the world loves us, then we're not doing our job. We got to remember that we are followers of Yeshua. If we're followers of Yeshua, then we're going to endure some of the same things that he endured. Okay. You cannot be a friend of the world or the friend of the friend of people of the world and be a follower of Yeshua. Okay. Uh, we have to get past wanting to feel good. And just wanting to, wanting to be good, meaning wanting to be like our savior. So what to do when you're feeling rejected? Well, the first thing you need to do when feeling rejected is of course, look to God, look to God and you look to heaven and you say, father, I am feeling rejected. Cause that feeling, it can be a, um, that feeling can, feelings can draw us into dark places and they can actually impact our behavior and our choices. So we do de definitely, when you're going through a really difficult feeling, you want to look to God first and foremost. And not only look to God in prayer, but also look to God within with what his word, what, you know, of course you need to be storing his word up in you. So what does his word say about rejection? Rejection creates deception. It is our responsibility to shine the light on it. So rejection will say, nobody wants you. No one accepts you. No one loves you. It, sometimes it will go to extremes. Um, or, you know, you're all alone. Well, that is a lie. What is the truth? The truth is, is that Yeshua is with me. He is for me. God has accepted me. God has loved me. Uh, and you're always going to find someone that accepts you. If you reject God, more than likely the world will accept you. Somebody in the world will accept you. But if you accept God, someone in the world is going to reject you. That's just the reality. Sometimes we're rejected by our own children. 
Sometimes we're rejected by our own spouses. I know many people have gotten married and then their spouse decides that maybe it's just not working for them. Um, you know, it's, I, you know, we have to stop focusing on what's happening to us and focusing on what God is saying about what is happening. We personalize it way too much. Um, so what to do when feeling rejected? One, look to God. Two, look to what God's word says about that rejection. And thirdly, embrace the rejection. This is why we have so much identity confusion in the world. This is why, um, see, Cain did not, he, he, he did not embrace the rejection. He became wroth. He became angry. And, um, you know, cause his offering was not acceptable. You know, God did not accept father did not accept his offering. And God said, well, you know, God was in, was coaching him and encouraging him to do what is right. So that he could actually accept an offering from him. Uh, but Cain refused to embrace the rejection of the offering. And by that refusal, he actually just, he went to the dark side. As we all know, like he kills his brother, then he gets cut off from God and, um, and then he builds his own, his own city. If that doesn't sound like the world we live in right now, he creates his own world. Cain goes out and creates his own world, his own city, his own people. And, um, if that doesn't sound like the world today, I don't know what it is, right? It's, it sounds like the world, the world is still doing this. So beware of rejection. Listen, guys. Rejection is getting a stronghold on you and others. Now listen, if, it's not, if it doesn't have a stronghold on you, it has a stronghold on somebody you know. And, um, and we have to get, we have to get a, a handle on this. We have to get a handle on this because when we do not understand what to do with, with rejection, we end up sinning. Totally end up sinning. Um, we have to accept we have to work towards um, loving ourselves and accepting ourselves where we are at and encouraging ourselves to grow in righteousness. So sometimes people will like make themselves, they'll reject themselves and expect themselves. They'll say, I love you when you're 30 pounds lighter. I'll love you when you stop making mistakes. I'll love you when dot, 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 dot. So uh, the other thing is, is that how can you expect others to love you when you have rejected yourself? You know, because if you if you've rejected yourself, you're not going to make decisions that are actually going to be um, that are going to that are going to draw healthy people towards you. All right. Um, so we've covered it. What to do when feeling rejected? One, get out, you know, confess your need for God, confess your feelings, pray and ask him about it. Uh, two, what does the word of God say about rejection? And um, and and and, you know, get on top of that rejection. Get on, get on top of that rejection. Hold on, I've got something coming through. Okay. Um, so why is it important to address rejection face on? Why is it important to embrace? That was the, that was the third point, embrace rejection. Uh, why is it important to, fa to, to address for, for, uh, for face on? Because if you don't address it, it is like a cancer. It is toxic. It will infiltrate your whole life. It will, it can infiltrate who you marry. You may settle for less than what God has for you. It will infiltrate what job you do and your calling. It can infiltrate how you parent. It can infiltrate on how you see life in general. It is viral. Uh, and, you know, and it will actually impact your relationship with God. You will find yourself telling God he is a liar and not even knowing that you're doing it. If God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love, if he says you are beautifully and wonderfully and fearfully made, if he says to be vulnerable and to embrace rejection and you are not doing those things, you are rejecting God. So it's important that we work on our rejection issues. Listen, there's a lie out there that says you're the only one that has rejection issues and you are not the only one. Everyone, every person that is a human has experienced some sort of rejection, whether it be at school, whether it be rejecting self and what you see in self, uh, whether it be from a parent. Do not allow a narcissistic wound to dictate your life. And the other thing that I learned, because I just got done with this master class on rejection, defeating rejection, is what I've learned is, is that, um, you know, rejection, we like to blame the devil. We like to blame the devil. 
Okay, but believe it or not, rejection is a it, it, most often is a flesh issue. It is carnality. It is our desire to be to be accepted and to uh, feel good. And um, and Yeshua, he man, he he combated that. He did not let that stronghold reign over him. And we are to follow him. And at the end of the day, all that matters is is that does God accept me? Does God accept me? And if God accepts me, then his true people will accept me. And we should not have any other God above him. And if we do not get a handle on rejection, we will find ourselves rejecting God. We will find ourselves calling God a liar. We will find ourselves denying God what is his. So, for example, if you, uh, you know, wrestle with, you know, unresolved rejection, you may be in a relationship with someone that God told you to cut off. You may be finding yourself pleasing people instead of saying what God wants you to say. You may find yourself um, not walking in boldness and courage and confidence because you are wrestling with rejection. Uh, now, how can you tell if you've got rejection issues? You can tell by whether you have a chip on your shoulder. If you are really like have a hard time trusting people and you push people away and you've got a little bit of an attitude... Uh, well, usually it's a lot of attitude. Everybody knows that person that has a chip on their shoulder and they're kind of like just cutthroat. That's rejection. So the next time you run into somebody that's going through that, that is the wall that they have built to keep people from uh, hurting them. Don't be so hard on those people in your mindset. Okay. Uh, and really ask God to give you a discernment on how to deal with those people. You're going to need, you're going to need the Holy Spirit to give you insight on how to deal with those people because it's not, there are variables when it comes to dealing with people. And, um, you know, one person that's going through that, it's got a chip on the shoulder. You may be called to endure with that person and, um, encourage them, walk beside them. But that's not an absolute because another person may not be ready for the love that you're offering. And you're just going to get beat up and actually cause that person to, you're going to be, you're going to be contributing to their sin by being in relationship with them because you're making yourself available for them to sin against you. And then there's those people that are terribly insecure and need, uh, the other side of this is with, to tell whether you have rejection issues or not, is you're a people pleaser. You want to make everybody happy. No. Okay, you want to make everybody happy. You're worried about what people think. You're worried about the way you look, you know, whether the way you look to people. It may even be your physical appearance. Whatever it may be, um, that's an indicator that you wrestle with rejection. Now, when we look at, we're going to look. Now, Yeshua was not, Christ was not afraid of rejection. And if you expect to do anything great for the kingdom, you're going to have to press through these rejection issues. You're going to have to press through these rejection issues. And the enemy would like, it, it's, a, it's a carnal, it, for the most part, it's a carnal thing. But the enemy does, he, he hijacks that. Meaning, anytime that we sin, the enemy, he's our cheerleader. Uh, he, or he may stir some things up. But remember, this is a crucifying the flesh. The flesh wants to be liked. The flesh wants to be acknowledged. The flesh wants to feel good. And you have to crucify the flesh. Um, we see that Satan did not have to talk to Cain. Um, Cain actually, so he was just sinning because this we are born into sin because we have this flesh, this corrupted flesh that is prone to sin. And it's our duty. It's our duty to wrestle this thing out. And sometimes crucifying the flesh, you part of crucifying the flesh is actually dealing with those soul wounds, dealing, doing the work. Listen, some of you that are watching this video, whether you're watching this video or whether you're watching live, some of you have been waiting for something miraculous to happen. Now, God will do his part, but you have to do your part. And some people are waiting on God to do the thing that he has called them to do. And so soul wounds, it's our responsibility to uh, work towards healing. Your mind is not going to renew just over the course of time. Now you add time plus effort and faith, you're going to see renewal and obedience. You're going to see renewal of the mind. The people are not doing the soul work. Yes, they're going to therapy, but therapy, it helps It helps in the sense of, and granted, I'm a retired therapist, therapy will help with taking out the trash, meaning like you've got all these thoughts that are, that are built up in your mind, 
and you go to the therapist and you process them and, and you get the validation that you need and maybe some tools that you can utilize to manage, to manage your symptoms. Manage. It's not, and it may feel like healing, but you'll find yourself still needing to go to the therapist every so often for a tune-up, right? Um, but I believe that Christ has called us to healing. And part of that healing process is taking the word of God, the counsel, finding people that are equipped and have good counsel who can help us walk through the healing journey, give us real practical biblical principles and strategies to overcome. The mind is not going to change. This is why the word says renew the mind. This is why we know we have to read our word. But guess what? Not only do we have to read the word of God, but we have to agree with the word of God. And not only do we have to agree with the word of God, but we have to put it into practice. Uh, and, and some people just don't know how to do that practically. And so you seek support to do that. So we're going to uh, close out. We're going to, well, one of the scriptures that I want you guys to lean into is Isaiah 53. And I know you guys are familiar with this scripture, um, but it, but it's about Yeshua. And he says, he, um, he is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. And it goes on to say, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed, uh, esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Okay, so are you a follower of Christ or not? A follower of Christ will embrace rejection. Yeshua did not say what was politically correct. He only, he, he did not take a, a position other than this is the word of God. This is what the word of God is. His opinion was, I agree with the word of God and to do the will of God. And that brought him a lot of rejection. Some of you are getting rejected. You know, some of you are experiencing rejection and you're totally innocent. Like you're not doing anything wrong. Then you are, you're in alignment with Yeshua's experience. Now your question is, what will you do with it? Now, some of you are experiencing rejection and it's because you've made some bad choices. Um, and instead of trying to change the word of God, try just changing the way you think about things and the way you're doing things so that it aligns with God. Let us not reject God. To reject God is to reject our own. We were created in his image. It is to reject self. And um, stop rejecting your yourself because you were created in the image of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I'm going to say this and it sounds very insensitive, but really this is the attitude that we need to have. So what if people don't like me? So what if people say bad things about me? So what if I have to walk the journey alone? So what? Because you know what? I know I, I am who God says I am. I know that I am his beloved. I know that he is with me. I know that he is for me. And I know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper in the end, right? In the end, let us be patient. Let us be patient. Let us be patient. So that brings me to my point here. I have been doing a detox and reboot my closing point, I've been doing a detox and reboot once a month. And the detox is actually, you know, the detox is better than therapy. I'm going to say it. Okay. I'm going to say it's better than therapy in the sense that um, in the detox, what we do is we identify toxic thoughts, thoughts that are actually, that don't align with biblical principles, those thoughts that are congested. And we work towards um you renewing the mind, but we do it on a large scale. It is like an accelerated, uh, we've done, we have done in these, these detox, what some people have, do, uh, you know, spent six months in therapy trying to do, you know, part of therapy is, is you go and you process your thoughts and work towards changing your thinking. Um, but imagine changing your thinking where the, your focal point is God. Your focal point is the word of God. And, um, you do it in a community of like-minded believers with application of prayer and fasting. Imagine the acceleration in that, right? And you also do it in a community where there's no, it's not, you know, um, that there's no, 
No, that it's just the word of God, meaning there's no like wiggle room that someone's going to tell you the truth in love. Um, that, that someone's not going to let you off the hook, but they're going to um, promote God. They're going to promote your destiny in you to rise up and to take your place as a child of God. So I would encourage you to join the detox and the reboot um, because it is it is going to help you deal with these sorts of things. If you're really serious about overcoming, you need to... You, and you want to truly equip, you need to stop talking about all of your problems and start looking to people who can help you strategize and actually get the solution and overcome. Uh, and uh, I've, like I've said, this will be my fourth detox and reboot. I do the detox and reboot myself. I have to renew my mind daily. I have to agree with God daily. Uh, I have to accept, like, you know, a lot of times I'll say I, I'm an overcomer. I eat challenges for breakfast. And that's me saying, I recognize that challenges are a part of life and they don't rule me because God has given me power and authority and he's given me wisdom. And guess what? This is not an Anna Johnson thing. This is something that's available to every believer. But the believer that actually applies these things in faith and is willing to lay down this life for the sake of the life to come will be able to walk in power and in authority and a boldness and a courage that looks insane, right? That looks insane. So I hope that you will work towards healing. Listen, healing is not magical. If you ever, if you really think that you're going to get healing when it comes to the mind, when it comes to the soul, um, you have to do your part. You have to do your part. And I would love to walk beside you and help you strategize on how to do that. It doesn't matter what, you know, most of our challenges are in our soul. Remember the soul is the mind and the emotions and the, the will. What will we choose? And that is our, pro that is our duty to deal with our soul, to deal with our mind. And to choose, God doesn't make our choices for us. We make, we, we're created in his image and we make those choices. So will you believe that, um, you know, will you be, believe the lie that everyone should accept you? Will you believe the lie of everything rejection has said to you? Or will you overcome? And it's not going to be magical. Like you're going to have to, like there's some soul wounds that are so deep that you are going to have to, you're going to have to hit this thing with with everything you got. And when you get to the end of you, guess what? God's going to show up. He's going to show up. Now, sometimes, you know, people take the long road towards healing. And um, I've seen people that um, don't come into their healing until they're like in certain areas until they're in their 80s. We don't have to take the long road of healing. We can actually find somebody that understands the concept, is able to help us walk, walk alongside us and help us overcome. Um, I learned some, I learned this stuff the hard, the long way because I didn't have anybody to walk alongside me, uh, other than God and God is enough. I had some truths that actually helped that were my guardrails that actually brought me to the place that I am now. And, uh, I'm so grateful for that. And I, you know, this is just part of my created purpose and the plans that God had for my life. Uh, but I would encourage you to get the support you need. Actually talk to someone that is healed. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, we go and we get biblical counsel from, from people, but there's no power there for them to help us. You know why there's no power there? Because they haven't been healed. Yeah, I said it. They haven't been healed. Um, if you, if you want to, you know, they, they haven't been healed or maybe they haven't went through what you've been through. So they don't have the understanding that they need to get to, to help you. But you know what? This is the wonderful thing. And this is the wonderful thing about God is that God sent his son on, you know, one to redeem us and to bring to bring uh, us back in alignment with the father and with the kingdom of heaven. But Yeshua, he did it in such a way that he could relate. He did it in flesh. He did it in it. He was a spirit, uh, spirit, spirit placed in a body. So he took on our burdens. He, and he knew what it was like to grieve. He knew what it was like to be thirsty. He did experience anger. But he was perfect in all those things. And he took all of that on. And you know what? He didn't have to, but he chose to. He chose to. And I would encourage you to be a true follower of Yeshua. Let's press through this rejection. Let's teach our children how to deal with rejection. Let's teach our sisters and our brothers how to deal with rejection. But you cannot teach what you do not know. 
So go and renew your mind. Invest in the detox and the reboot. It is a, listen, it, it is a small investment compared to the transformation that it's going to make not only in your life, but in the lives to come. It's an investment in the kingdom. Uh, invest in your healing. And you need that accountability to do the work because it's not an easy work. It's five days a week. I mean, I'm sorry, it's, it's going to be five days out of the week. It's going to be from like 12 to 1. Just invest and then do the homework and look how you start to transform. Glory, glory, glory. So let's pray. Father, I thank you that indeed we do not have to sit on, sit here in the place of soul wounds. We do not have to agree with what, you know, maybe our parents has told us that were lies that they, that they had inherited from their parents. That we don't have to agree with what the world says about us. That we don't have to agree with our feelings because sometimes our feelings are so off. But we get the opportunity to renew our mind. And in that renewing by faith, we take action and we do the work. We wrestle that every one of our thoughts would agree with your word. And with, and with the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, Father, Father, for we are to be lights and ambassadors for your kingdom, Father. And we are called to be in relationships and we are called to be vulnerable and we are called to learn to connect with other humans from a genuine, clean, loving place in love. So, Father, I pray that um, anyone that's watching this, uh, that they would partner with their healing father, that they would finally show up and do the work and that they would put away this magical thinking, thinking that next year it'll be better. Or if they get in a relationship, it'll be better, but they will have the revelation that they have to renew their mind, that they have to deal with their soul wounds because you have equipped them to do so. You have given them a part in that. You've given them a part to um, partner with the healing. In Yeshua's name we pray and we thank thee and we give thee the glory, Father. Hallelujah and hallelujah and amen. Amen. All right, so if this video was helpful for you, and of course it was because it is the word of God, I want you to share it. I want you to share. These are the sorts of things that I'll be talking about with Tea Time with Anna. Um, it is time for the overcomer to rise up. And part of that rising up is actually showing up to do our part. We get to do our part. We get to show up, we get to renew our minds and that when, and we get to heal and let's stop, let's put away the magical thinking, thinking that we're just going to arrive and we're going to be healed. Healing is a partnership with God. Um, it is our duty to renew our minds. And I think we get, we look at that renewal of the mind like a religious thing. Oh, I need to read my word. But they, but part of renewing that mind is, is casting down those strongholds. Every thought that exalted the self against the truth of Yah's word, of God's word. It has to be cast down. And that's no easy job, guys. That is no easy job, especially when it's padded with, and I'm talking neurologically, like the brain. It's no easy job when you've uh, experienced, when there is a lie padded with a, a difficult emotion. That is not, it, it is no easy task. It takes intentionality. It takes strategy and it takes faith and hope and perseverance. And so I will coach you through it. I'll walk you through on how to bring those strongholds down. And once you understand this method, you, you know, then you're able to teach others and you're able to walk in greater freedom, the freedom that Yeshua has made available to you, that you can actually experience the healing. And, and sometimes in, in a lot of times we just want the healing to be radical. We just want deliverance, but deliverance are for those who need it. And, healing sometimes healing is just a part of like the work that we need to do and uh we can't be delivered from ourselves guys we can't be delivered from our past uh our but but things can be but we can be shifted and shaped and molded into the greater likeness of yeshua and that's our duty to take hold of that take take hold of that duty and and do it and that is a wrestle and, uh, but it, the rewards are so great and, um, the blessings that you will be able to pour out to others from generation to generation. Um, and, and even, you know, you're touching other generations, even outside of your household, because if you touch another, you touch a friend who has a family, then she impacts her children. And then you're impacting the great, her, her great, her grandchildren and her great grandchildren. And, and, uh, so work on the healing. I will put the link in, um, in the thread. Um, and I hope to see you at the next detox. Again, the detox is, it's the 17th through the 21st. 
and uh, I hope to see you there. Detox and Reboot. We'll be detoxing the mind and the body, making room for the Spirit of God to flow freely through our hearts and our minds. It's our duty to um, for our mind to say, behold, the King. You know, we make room for Yeshua to, to come and to reign in our hearts and in our minds. We make room. If that is our duty to, um, you know, we're preparing the way that he may, he may take the territory in our hearts and in our minds. And this takes intentionality. Um, this is us uh, going into a greater relationship with God. So. I love you guys. Like I said, please share, 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 share this. And I hope to see you next Monday with Tea Time with Anna. Shalom.